Hey, how y'all doing out there? Hey, I'm pretty excited. I just got back from the big city. I live in a small town. Went to the big city and I picked up a couple of GoPros. Um, I had one older GoPro, which you see in a few videos that I did back, you know, in uh, 2020, uh, when I first started the channel. Uh, but I got I got a couple of GoPros are voice activated. So that's why I kept messing up and and missing my fish catches was because I had a little remote that dangled down here and You know trying to figure all that out. So these are both voice actuated and uh, It should be some pretty good videos uh, Later on in the year. Hey in this week's video We're gonna go over setting up your screens and your combinations and things like that it's a week into daylight savings and I haven't been able to get out on the water yet. The wind has just been terrible. Wind, rain, uh, you know, it, my lake is a fairly big body of water here in the Panhandle of Texas and that wind just, it'll blow 25, 30 mile an hour and it's just a mess. So anyway, I got to thinking about it and I said, you know, my, my, my two units are all over the place. I've done all these videos and i mean i've got a bunch of waypoints i need to get rid of i've got combinations built that i don't want so i'm going to go through the process of how i set my screens up now depending on the body of water you fish the type of fishing you're doing yours may be completely and totally different but a few common things you need to make sure of is that your frequencies are all set properly your combination screens are set the way you want them your networking is set up the way you want it, and also your overlays. Uh, the overlays are real important. You want to make sure you don't have like inset screens, those boxes in there when you don't want them on the screen, or if you do want them, you want to make sure they're reading out the right information. Because when you're out on the water, you want to be looking for fish. You don't want to be playing with that fish finder in the configuration, right? Okay. So it should be informative. Let's go ahead and get to it. To get this started, I've got two units. I've got one on the bow and one on the console. So let's start with the bow mounted unit. Now these are networked together so depending on which transducer I want it to read off of, I can have it read off the front transducer on the trolling motor or the back transducer. So let's check that first. Let's go home, settings, communications, and preferred sources. So my water temperature, we can go ahead and set that back to the uh, console. So it'll read off the back because my trolling motor is going to be up with the transducer out a lot of the time. So the traditional sonar, now I want that to be what they call built in, whatever the unit cradle is plugged into, which in this case is going to be on my trolling motor. My clear view and my side view, I'm going to go ahead and leave those on the uh, back transducer off the console and you'll see why. So you probably picked up on that. But another option you have is to set it to auto, which when it's in auto, what it does is when it sees one transducer comes out of the water or stops working, it transfers over to the other transducer, which in this case would probably be a better option. As when I pull my trolling motor out of the water, my front transducer is gonna quit working, so it'll automatically go to the rear transducer. So I'll probably go ahead and make that change when I get out on the water. Remember your side view likes to go in a straight line. So putting it on your trolling motor uh, probably isn't a real good idea because you're always turning the head of your trolling motor from one side to the other. So I'd always advise leaving your side view on the, uh, on the rear transducer where you're going straight. So the only thing I'm gonna have off the trolling motor is gonna be the traditional sonar. Let's go ahead and go back. Now the first combo I want, I want a map on one side and traditional chirp on the other. So let's go ahead and go to our combos. 
And there's one right there. Combo 27. So we'll click that and we'll select shortcut key number one. Go OK. And it's already set to chirp. So that's what I wanted. And my map on the other side. So that's good to go. Now, if I wanted to change the frequency on this, I would go menu and traditional. And I like doing it through the beam width and I could select something other than chirp. Okay, so we got shortcut number one done. Now these numbers on the side, I'm gonna show you this kind of important. Uh, they annoy me when you got these inset numbers, they call them inset. So let me show you that. Number one, go menu. And to get those on or off the screen, you gotta to go to configure combination. Edit overlays and overlay numbers. If I wanted to show those, now look. See, now you've got those on the side. And like I showed you in the other video, if you do have those and you want to change one of them, just hold it on there and you can change it to say the water temperature. The water temp, there you go, that changed that. Like I say, I don't like those, so let's go ahead and go back menu, configure combination, edit overlays, overlay numbers, let's go ahead and get rid of those. All right, now it's important to note when you set these up, when you set up the frequency for a transducer, it affects all the combos. So if you go in here and you change it from chirp to say 145 uh, kilohertz, because you want a wider cone angle, that's gonna change all the traditional sonar coming off of that transducer and the trolling motor. Now, number two, suppose I should want sonar and split frequency. And let's see if we can change that one over to 145. So menu, beam width, left, and 145. Now I got 145 and chirp. So let's see if that changed on shortcut number one. No, it didn't. So it depended on which screen I put that on. So I've got chirp on the number one shortcut key. Number two, which is my split frequency, I've got 145 and chirp. All right, for shortcut key number three, I want traditional chirp and clear view. Let's go ahead and set that shortcut key number three. Click OK. And our traditional is already set at chirp. And our down view is at 840. So this is pretty cool right here. If you notice, you got the GT52 on the left side and the GT54 UHD on the right side. So I'm able to look at the front and the back of the boat off of one screen. Now, the uh, clear view, I keep saying down view, the clear view on this particular unit with a GT54, the transducer I have, you don't have any options for changing the frequency. So if I go to my Clearview menu, you notice I don't have anything. I can't change that frequency. When I got it on Clearview, it's on, it's on 840. That's the only choice I have with that particular transducer. Number four, I just want that to be straight up down view or clear view. Okay, so we'll set that. Shortcut number four. There we go. All right, so we've got the bow unit all set up. If you have the units networked together and you're reading both units off the same transducer, like I'm reading my down view on my front unit off my back transducer the same as this, if I change the frequency here, 
it's going to affect my front unit as well. Your transducer can only be set to one frequency for uh, one unit and if they're networked it sets them for both. So that's important if you have them networked together to realize that if you change it on what the frequency on one unit if both of them are off, feeding off the same transducer, it changes both of them. So on the console, my number one, I want to have that set to a map and a traditional chirp. So I've already got that set on number one, but if I didn't, I would just go ahead from here and I would hold it down and shortcut key number one as we did on the other unit. All right, so as you can see, I've already got a map on one side and traditional chirp on the other. So we're good to go on that one. Go home, go combos. Number two, I'm gonna set up as a map on one side and down view on the other. So let's see, we've got that here, number two. Make sure that's set up with my shortcut, it is. And I've got map. And remember, on my, on my clear view, I've, I don't have a selection. It's 840 kilohertz. And that's, that's all I can set that at. Okay, number three. Go back. Number three, I want traditional on one side and down view on the other. And that would be here. And I've got traditional chirp and down view at 840 kilohertz over here. And number four. Combo. I want side view and down view. So I got my side view on top and my down view or my clear view on the bottom. Now, this is the only screen on either unit that I have set to side view. So I like it at 455 when I'm starting out because it reaches farther out. If I wanted to change that, go to menu, side view, and I do have a choice. I can change it to 1120 kilohertz, right there. But I'm gonna start out at 455. And it doesn't affect anything because I'm not using the, uh, the front unit for side view anyway. All right, so if you notice, I have my traditional chirp and my clear view, both reading off the back transducer. Unlike the front unit where I could see the front end and the back of the boat, I leave these both on reading off the back transducer because my trolling motor is going to be up when I'm using my big motor. I don't want to tear my trolling motor off unless I'm in, you know, really deep water and I know it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave these both running off the back transducer. And guys, I hope this video helps you. Remember, this is just how I set mine up. Everybody's going to be different depending on the body of water, depending on the fish you're trying to catch. So I hope this helps, and we'll see you on the next one. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe. Let's get out on the water and have a great day.